Well, it's kind of a sad day today at Cruise Man's Garage because we have to say goodbye to an old friend. 27 years old. Wow. That's coming up right after this. Hey everybody, I'm Cruise Man, and this is Coffee and Comments with Cruise Man. This is kind of something I do once a month where we just sit around and talk. I go over some of the comments that people have put in on my YouTube channel, and uh, pretty much we talk about motorcycle-related topics on this channel. But Coffee and Comments is kind of a time where I can just talk about anything, but I usually respond to people's comments on the YouTube channel. But before we get started, one thing you'll notice that's missing from this week's or this month's coffee and comments is my cup of coffee. And that's because, sadly, my Braun coffee maker died this week. I got this in 1994 as a housewarming gift from my mother when I bought a house in Plano and it has served me faithfully for 27 years. I don't think I own anything else that I've had for 27 years. And this last week, it just finally, you know, hit the bed and it's dead. So unfortunately, uh, I have to say goodbye to my Braun coffee pot. This was actually made in Germany. I doubt that Braun is made in Germany anymore and everything's made in China now. So I doubt that you'll ever buy a coffee pot that uh, will last more than maybe four or five years now, but I don't know, who knows. So I'm gonna say goodbye to Mr. Braun. And I was at Kroger yesterday, which is a chain of grocery stores here in Texas and maybe in other places, I don't know. And I bought a new Keurig K-Mini. And I'm going to take this thing out, hook it up, and I'm going to drink my very first cup of coffee from this new coffee maker on air live. You, this is something you're going to be able to tell your kids and grandkids about. Okay, so I got it all put together. I did check on the bottom. I looked at the bottom of this. And it's not made in China. It's made in Thailand, which is a little better. I love Thai food, so I guess that's okay. These cheap bastards didn't even give me a sample K-cup to try out. I bought one of these little refillable K-cups. I don't even know if it's going to work. It has to clip together. and I basically put my own coffee in here. And then we're going to drop that in there. So that way, rather than measuring, and that comes out to about mm, just over 10 ounces. And I'm going to put that on there. Close this. Boy, that was a good sound, wasn't it? Turn it on. And we'll see if this thing will make me a cup of coffee. There is a power button on top. I don't know, now it's lit up. Am I really going to have to read the instructions on how to make a cup of coffee? I don't hear it doing anything. We'll give it a try here in a little bit and check it. Okay, so let's go through some of the comments that we received on the YouTube channel this uh, last month. One comment I got from uh, NK Das says, Not sure why Honda stick to just two or three colors. It should have been an array of colors so that customer has a wide range to choose from. Um, I think he's referring to my review of the 2021 Goldwing where I talk about the color choices. And um, the reason that Honda has limited the number of colors on these Goldwings is simply just a matter of cost. You know, every time they add another color uh, option, and it's not unusual for most motorcycles to only come in two, maybe three colors at the most. Now, Harleys may be a little bit different, but it costs a lot of money to maintain a uh, color skews uh, in inventory in case you need to replace a part. So if you have to replace a saddlebag lid, if they offer it in five colors, they got to keep those in inventory. So I can understand why Honda does only offer a couple of different colors. Let's go on to Mark Heinig. And he says, 
that so the bike bottoms out on the same road seam uh, but no mention of other bottoming out on other locations. And, and I think you may have remembered in my review video, there's a, per, a section of the overpass that I go over where the, this thing's not making coffee. What the hell's the problem? We'll try I'll hit the button again, see if it does anything. So there was this one section of the overpass that I went over that basically you could hear it sounds like the the front suspension is bottoming out somebody put in a comment i can't find it and i think he might be right it could have been the road seam making the noise not the front suspension because it was kind of curious it was a very small bump it wasn't very uh you know it didn't feel like a harsh jolt or anything like that so i think it's very likely that um it was the, the road or the seam in the road maybe had something loose that when I hit it, it was making that sound. What in the hell is going on with this coffee maker? There's, I, there's not even a... Well, yeah, there is a manual. Now look, it shouldn't be this difficult to boil water. Power button. Maybe my power strip's not... No, it's on. No, it's got power because the light's on. The brew indicator is flashing. The brew indicator light illuminates solid, then begins to pulse while the brewer is heating. Why is it not going in? It really is this difficult to take a cup of coffee. Okay, now it's flashing. The light's flashing. Maybe I put the cup in there too soon. I have to relearn how to make coffee. Okay, seems like I hear something. Wait a minute. There's electricity, there's a light flashing, there's a cup in there. Serenity now. From Dennis Weish, I think that's how I pronounce it. I'm Canadian, no vaccine for a long time. You're lucky that your government did its job. Love my Goldwing. Can't wait for the snow to be gone. That's real interesting, Dennis, because most of the politicians here tell us how wonderful the Canadian health care system is and how we all need government-run health care. So um, thank you for that comment. I'm, that's very interesting. I have had my vaccine. I got a lot of comments on that uh, motive log where I talked about it. Um, but uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't want to get the vaccine. That's okay. That's your choice, I guess. As Moto, as Mo, oh, AZ Motor Cop, I guess that's Arizona Motor Cop, <clears throat> won't be getting any vaccines until, until it's thoroughly tested on the rest of you. Now, I got a lot of comments like this. I'm not sure how anyone can require proof of vaccination. Isn't that a HIPAA violation? Well, um, for those of you that don't live in the United States of America, we have what are called HIPAA laws, which are basically health uh, to protect your privacy and health information. And uh, when it says, if you're uh, not sure how you can provide proof of a vaccine, would that violate the HIPAA laws? I think if you voluntarily provide the proof, uh, it would not violate the HIPAA laws. Now, if you say you went and applied for a job and they were able to look up online whether or not you'd had the vaccine, that might violate those laws. But if you voluntarily, uh, is, I'll give you an example. Um, when you go to certain countries, you have to get a yellow fever shot and you have to, you get a card from your county health department or whatever showing that you received that yellow fever shot. And when you go to the airport to get on a flight to go to Africa, they'll ask you for that verification that you've had that shot. That's not a violation of HIPAA since you're volunteering the information. Uh, that's just my opinion. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. Okay, Dwight Donahue says, off topic, but I've never seen you use a jack. Do you own one if the hydraulic jacks you often see used on other bikes work on the new wings. I keep putting off getting one for fear of it not working on my bike. The exhaust headers on my F6B look like they would be too low for these jacks. And he goes on and says a few other things. Um, Dwight, they do make jacks that work with the Goldwing and the F6B. Um, I My understanding is they make... Um, 
like a, I'll call it a jig, but that's not the word for it. It's a, an adapter that goes on those jacks so that when they go under your bike, they don't hit your, your exhaust pipes. So uh, you might check with Pitbull. Uh, you might check with JNS jacks. I don't personally own these jacks. I've never, I've never used one, so I don't know much about them. I've just heard those names mentioned around. If any of you other, other people out there have, have a jack and you've used these lifts or jacks, please put it in the comments down below. Give Dwight some uh, information to go on and you know who to talk to for an F6B. And he's talking about uh, upgrading possibly the 2018 model. I think there's only one jack out there that has a one of these adapters for a 2018, but I couldn't tell you which one it is. But somebody out there knows the answer to that question, and I'm sure they'll put it in the comments of this video. John Busby, cruise man, thank you for what you do for the motorcycle world. We all appreciate you. Wow, thank you, John. I appreciate that. I had to throw that in because I don't get those all the time, and it's nice to hear uh, some good news. I looked at 2021 wing, and man, it's nice. Problem is it's north of 29000 They're not moving on the price either. Uh, this is from Kim Newling. Now, Kim, the reason they're not moving on the price right now is because they're very hard to get. They're in short supply. Uh, once we see inventory levels rise on the new gold wings, uh, you'll start to see those uh, prices coming down. It's a su supply and demand. So the more there are out there in the dealer inventory, the more likely they are to offer discounts. And But right now, it's hard to get gold wings. There's a real shortage of elect uh, electrical chips from Japan. I'm sure that's part of the reason for the shortage of gold wings. Uh, the same thing is true of cars. Right now, there's a lot of new car shortages around the world and around the country. So um, it's the same thing. As far as the $29,000 price tag, you're right. That's high. I can promise you one thing I know for sure. I can say this unquestionably without any reservation. That price will never come down in the future. Um, now, there might be deals. You know, you might get discounts off because of inventory levels. But the price of a Goldwing will continue to rise, as will the price of everything else. In fact, I would not be surprised if you don't see dramatic price increases in the next couple of years. Al Forster, Forster I'm not sure how to say that. Apologize, Al. First off, thanks for great content. I just discovered your channel. I'm in the market for a late model Goldwing. How many changes, improvements really occur between 2018 and 2020? Are there any pitfalls I should be concerned with? Thanks in advance. This is a, actually a pretty good question. The main differences between the 2018 and the 2020, I'll try, I'm going from memory here. You get a second smart key with the 2020 or the 2019 actually. In 2020, they included the fog lights, which is a, you know, a fairly expensive add-on when you have it installed just because of the button and the switch. Uh, oh, I know what it is. You get the better passenger hand grips that are much easier to grip to put on the center stand, better for your passengers too. So you get the upgraded hand grips in 2020, uh, but those will fit on a 2018 or 2019. So if you do buy a 2018 or 2019, uh, you can put the newer uh, passenger handrails on. The other change in 2020 was they did some changes to the DCT transmission. And it does shift a little smoother, in my experience, especially on the downshifts. So other than that, I uh, don't think there's any other changes. Uh, as far as pitfalls, if you buy a 2018, you are buying a first-year model year. Uh, but you'll probably save a ton of money. So I would try to look for a 2018 or 2019 that still has a factory warranty. As long as you've got a factory warranty, I think that would be a wise decision. I wouldn't buy one if the warranty has expired, and I wouldn't trust a third-party warranty. So that's just my opinion. Uh, anybody free to jump in on that on the comments, please do. One important thing to mention when using any clay bar, this is from my Clay Bar Griot's uh, Speed Shine video. One important thing to mention when using a clay bar is that if you happen to accidentally drop the clay bar onto the floor, then you should discard it uh, because it's going to pick up contaminants on the floor. And if you, if you don't throw it away, you're basically just going to transfer those contaminants to the paint. That's a very good point. That's from Michael Johnson. Michael, thank you for that tip. I forgot to put that in the video, but it's true. If, you, if you're using the clay bar on your paint and you accidentally drop the clay bar, 
just go ahead and throw it away and start with a new piece because it's it's going to have crap all over it. Very good point here uh, about possibly scratching the paint if you drop the clay bar. He also says he soaks the clay bar in warm water prior to use as it makes it slightly more pliable. That's a good tip. I haven't tried that. I'll try that. Uh, Jim Nielsen, small question. What is the device in the front inside of the trunk? And he asks, is that a phone cradle? I think, again, he's referring to my review of the 2021 Honda Goldwing. And yes, it was an airbag model. And on the airbag model, Honda does include a phone cradle in the front of the trunk. So you can slip your phone in there. It's got a couple of little rubber bands that hold the phone in place. And you have a USB cable in the trunk to connect your phone for things like CarPlay. That brings me almost to my last, well, actually to my last comment. <laughs> And it's an interesting one because it could mean that Cruise Man's garage is going to be retired. Uh, I'm going to retire wealthy because I got this email this last week. And I just thought I'd share it with you because when I'm on the beach in Hawaii drinking those drinks and thinking, laughing at all of you back here, I want you to know why I think it's only fair. I'm going to read this to you. My name is Leisha Rules. I'm a 73-year-old widow from California. I found your contact information on an evangelical group website. Not sure how she found me on there. I have a terminal illness, and as a result, I am willing to transfer my inheritance worth over $10 million to you in exchange for a promise that you would always look out for poor and vulnerable people around the world. Yes, I promise that. If you're interested in getting this inheritance, please reply back and my lawyer would get to you shortly. So, there you have it. I'm just one of the lucky guys that got the email. Uh, sorry, but uh, when that $10 million comes in, I just wanted to share that with you. So, thanks for joining me today. I don't know if I'll ever have another coffee in comments because I don't know if I'm ever going to have coffee again. But I'm going to try to take this in the kitchen and I'm going to give it a couple more tries, see if I can get it to work. I know I'm going to get 50 comments from all of you saying, oh, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're doing. You got to do this and you got to do that and you got to do that. Okay. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button. You know the drill. Anyway, thanks again for joining me today. I'll see you on the next Coffee and Comments with Cruise Man. Why the hell didn't this thing work? Uh, It's official. Truly, I am an idiot. I went back and read the instructions for this coffee maker. You can hear it. Sounds like a jet engine taking off. But it does work. <laughs> There's a big silver button on top. I didn't know. you got to press that. That's what they call the brew button. Oh, God. How will I ever lift down the shame? So, it apparently does work. Now, I didn't know that was a button. All it had was the logo on it. And we'll see if this thing makes a drinkable cup of coffee. I hear it. It's doing something. A tribute to the Thai people. And it doesn't do it quietly. I got a cup of coffee. It did work. It spits water out all over the table, but it, it does make a cup of coffee. Tastes like coffee.